You are joining a video lecture series from GG413 Geological and Data Analysis. This particular video will cover the Kolmogorov Smirnov test, and this is covered also in section 2.3.3 of Wessel's notes. Now, the Kolmogorov Smirnov test is a test for goodness of fit to the shape of a PDF or probability density function. It has the same role as the parametric chi-squared goodness of fit test, but this is a non-parametric test. And the advantage it has over the chi-squared goodness of fit test is there is no need to arbitrarily divide our data into a selection of bins. As you recall, the chi-squared goodness of fit test required us to define a set of distinct bins and compare the frequency distributions of the sample in those bins with an expected frequency distribution. The KS, the Kolmogorov-Smirnov test, does not require that. Now, this test, the KS test, can be used to test the equality of two sample test equality of the probability density functions of two sampled populations. Or it could be used to test whether a sampled population has the same PDF as some known or theoretical PDF. So the former case would be, this would be a two sample test, but it could also be used as a one sample test. So stating a no, the null hypothesis, the appropriate null hypothesis is that the PDF of population one is equal to the PDF of population two. And again, this could be either another sampled population or it could apply to a theoretical PDF. And then the alternative is that the two PDFs are not equal. So the procedure is to first sort the values in a sample and then compute the cumulative probability, which we'll call S x and 
And here, Sx is the fraction of all measurements whose values are less than x. So in other words, the cumulative probability for our smallest measurement which will be the first measurement in our sorted array, will equal zero. And the cumulative probability for everything being less than the largest element, largest measurement, which will be the last in our sorted array, will be one. So what we'll do is we'll do that for both of our samples. So this is a cumulative probabil probability dis distribution for all the values in sample one and the cumulative probability distribution for all the values in sample two. And our statistic is simply the maximum absolute difference between those two cumulative probabilities. So D is the maximum absolute difference between S1 and S2. And that's our key statistic. So considering an example, the example that Wessel gives, is he's comparing salinities from Whitewater Bay to a normal distribution. So there, in this example, there are n equals 48 measurements. And he sets the significance level to 5%. Now, he numerically calculates the cumulative, p, cumulative distribution for the sample. Okay, so that, that's the, um, the light line here. And then the cumulative distribution, cumulative probability distribution for normal distribution is just one half times one plus the error function of z over the square root of two. Okay where the salinity measurements would be calculated, the z values of each salinity measurement would be computed to get this smooth curve. And what he finds is that the maximum difference is equal to 0 0.06, and that occurs at a salinity of 53 ppm. And so we inspect our KS table, and this is a KS table for a one sample test. And it's, it's a two-sided test. And so this table gives numbers, sample sizes up to 40, um, but for values greater than 40, we have, we use, um, and we're, we're, right, so we're working at the, looking at the 5% significance level, 
And so we have to multiply, well, we take 1.36 divided by the square root of 48. And when we do that, we get 0 0.1963. So the critical D value for D48 at 0 0.05 is equal to 1.36 divided by the square root of 48, and that's equal to 0 0.1963. And our D value happens to be less than 0.1963. So the salinity, the salinity is measured, the, the cumulative probability distribution of the, of the salinities measures do not deviate significantly enough from the cumulative probability distribution for a normal distribution. So we cannot reject our null hypothesis that the two both have normal distributions. D is simply not big enough to reject the null hypothesis. And I forgot to mention that the normal curve that Wessel compares the salinity measurements to has the same mean and standard deviation estimated for the sample population. So he took the mean of the salinities and assumed that was the mean for the normal distribution, and he took the standard deviation of the salinities and gave that as the standard deviation of the normal population in computing z here. And so the Komogorov Smirnov test, again, is really a test of. of a variety of aspects of the probability density function. It tests both the mean and st standard deviation because it's, again, a goodness of fit to the shape of the test probability density function. So that concludes our discussion of the Komogorov Smirnov test. Again, it's a non parametric test for goodness of fit for a PDF.